Are you a OBS live streamer? Are you thinking about buying some kind of an extra keyboard to control your show live? Have you noticed that the cost of these extra keyboards cost anywhere between 50 to 300 to 400 dollars? I'm here to tell you that I'm going to provide you an 88 key switcher keyboard that will do everything that you need to do with OBS for a grand total of 10 bucks at Walmart. Stay tuned for the details. This channel is centered around YouTube tips, tools, and marketing strategy for the budding YouTube creator. I dig and fight and find all the cool tips and tricks so that you can grow quickly in this highly competitive venue. Subscribe and click the bell for new video notification and live stream shows every week. I hope to see you there. All right, let's get started with the project. You're gonna need some materials. You're gonna need some Elmer's glue, some rubber cement, rubber cement because it's a forgiving glue. I'll explain that in a little bit. You're gonna need scissors and or a razor, okay? You're gonna need a printer. I'm assuming you have a printer at your house. Doesn't matter if it's color or black and white. Color would be more cool. Black and white also works without any issue. And you're gonna need the $10 keyboard it is the on soft touch keyboard, comfortable, low profile design from Walmart for $10.88 in Pennsylvania. That's not including tax. This is a cheap blood and guts printing keyboard that you need for the task for this project at hand. Now, there's one more thing you need. That is a program called HID Macros. This is for PC users. If you have a Mac, there are Mac solutions out there. One is called Carabiner. And what this program does is it does uh, two things. It identifies the unique keys for the second keyboard that you're going to be plugging into your computer. And it assigns macros. I'm going to dig into this. I'm going to explain how to set up the macro code. It's not hard, but I'm telling you, this is from the perspective of a PC and not so much uh, uh, from the perspective of a Mac user. But you can get this done with a Mac. All right, so this video will still help you. So I hope you enjoy the content here. Let's go. You may or may not know that, but if you have multiple keyboards plugged into your computer, your computer assumes that it is one keyboard. So for example, if I have two plugged in right now, if I go over here and I hit 111 on my first keyboard to my left here, and then I go down here and I hit 111 on the second keyboard, well, the system thinks it's just one. And that's a problem when you wanna assign unique keys to macros to play and do different things on OBS. And I'm gonna show you how. Go into HID Macro Program, hit yes to open it up. It was developed by flight simulator gamers who wanted to build their own cockpits and they needed a way to have multiple keyboards. And they built this software and basically it is a piece of software that develops a script that the computer can read and identify a unique button push from a second keyboard. Thank you gamers, thank you Flight Simulator guys for developing this software because it's great for OBS. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is hit new and I'm gonna have a button, a unique button on my second keyboard that plays a car horn sound effect. So I'm gonna define this button as SFX car horn, sound effect, car horn, okay? And then I'm gonna click the scan button. This is where you register that button on the second keyboard. I'm gonna hit the number four. Okay, and as you can see next to that scan, it says key B4524. That's the unique identifier for that second keyboard. And now I want to have that button push send the right sequence of buttons to OBS to play the sound. Now we do that by going into the scripted area. And uh, I have a predefined script that's the following. And uh, I want to explain this to you. It's pretty simple and straightforward. It's HD macros. This is basically starts the script dot send key slow. This tells the macro not to activate right away because for some reason OBS has difficulty registering the keystroke when it happens in a second, in a microsecond. So we're slowing it down. And then the stuff between the, co the quotes here is the actual key series of keystrokes that it will activate. In this case, it is uh, Alt, Control, and Shift, and I'm gonna put the number four right here because I hit the four key on the other keyboard. And then 50 represents the delay. The 50 milliseconds is the delay so OBS can read it. So what's happening here? When I hit key four on the second keyboard, it's going to uh, enter the following keystrokes. Control, it's gonna hold down Alt, 
control and shift and then it's going to hit four that's four buttons all at once when i hit four it's going to go boom and hit those that combination into obs so i'm going to show you how to set up a sound effect in obs with hotkeys in just a second but the reason why i'm having it do these multiple keystrokes is because if you have any browsers open like chrome and you just assign a single keystroke like the number four or an f key the browser uses those keystrokes as short keys to activate different things in the browser window and your and your live stream is going to fall apart because your windows are doing all this crazy stuff when you're trying to play a sound effect so i i'm uh, i recommend that you use this specific script i'll put it in the description so you can use it where it uses alt control and shift and then the key so that you're not screwing up all the windows okay uh, so that means you can use all your F keys, all your numbers, all your letters, and all your other characters. It opens up the horizon to all this great stuff for OBS. Now highlight that command and copy it and go back into uh, HID macros and paste it into the scripted window. Now click compile. This is when the script is actually created. And hit save confirmation. You don't have to hit save confirmation every time. It just saves the naming of the button that you create and that kind of stuff. What's absolutely important is that you click compile because the script has to be created so that the computer understands the command, okay? Now open up OBS and open up the scene. You should have only one scene with all your sound effects in it, okay? Ask me in comments why that's important. It's extremely important to have one scene that contains all your sound effects. Open up that scene, open up the sources inside that scene, hit the plus key, Select media source, uh, keep your naming convention tight in regards to these sound effects because it can get real confusing real quick if you don't have a, a tight uh, naming convention. In my case, I type it out as sound space FX dash and then the type of sound effect. In this case, it's a car horn. I hit OK. And now I find the location of that sound effect here. It is located in Scott, Subchoice, OBS Sources, Sound Effects, and Car Horn. There we go. Hit open. Uh, we don't want to loop it. Uh, restart playback when source becomes active. Yes. Use hardware decoding. Yes. Show nothing when playback ends. Correct. And close file when, in, when inactive. That's also important. Hit OK. OK. Once the sound effect has been added, we want to go in. I've got already a bunch in here. I'm going to find it real quick. Uh, here we go. Car horn. You want to click the gear, advanced audio properties, and make sure. Here's the car horn here. Make sure that monitor and output is selected. That way you can hear it when you play it during your live show. That's super important as well. Hit uh, the X. And now we want to go into settings hotkeys and scroll down until you find that sound effect it and now beware you don't want to go into all sound effects okay you don't want to go in there and make this addition scroll down a bit and here it is here sound effects car horn and you want to put your keystroke that you just added push to talk I just hit the key look at that control plus alt plus shift plus four just like we programmed and then restart media you want to hit the same thing hit the button and what that does is it allows you to hit the sound effect button over and over again so for example if it was like a um, uh, applause and you wanted the applause to start over right away you could hit the button the applause will start to play out you can hit it again and it will immediately start from the beginning and play on uh, so that's why I have the start and restart as the same keystroke now, I'll, I also created a mute and unmute button. That is mute is the Z key. So control shift Z in that case and control shift X unmutes it, which is kind of helpful in case you hit the wrong button and the, and the sound effect starts playing out. You can quickly turn it off with those two keys. Uh, OK, hit ap apply and hit OK. And you are good to go. This is how you create a second keyboard that can control events on OBS. Now, I want to tell you what happens if you unplug the keyboard. Well, honestly, it's not the end of the world. The only thing that you need to do is rescan the individual buttons that you've created using HID macros. You see, if you unplug the keyboard and replug it in, 
the computer reassigns a new identity to the key the keypad the second keypad and you're going to have to rescan the buttons so that the system understands what the new buttons are that's it really this is going to be a bit of a problem if you don't have icons pasted to the buttons so that you don't know what they play or maybe you didn't record on a piece of paper what the buttons actually do uh, if you have labels on the keys explaining what they do with little icons it's going to be very easy to fix that issue uh, I'm going to give you a reference a link to a template that will contain both small buttons which are the F keys and the larger buttons which are the A through F the alphabet and the numbers so that you can go into flaticon.com that's F L A T I C O N as in Nancy dot com it's a website where you just provide in a, a, a search query and it will spit back icons just hundreds of icons any subject that you can think of from horns to bullet guns to guns to explosions you name it it's got every icon that you could think of it's perfect for this task go there check it out the stuff is you can use it it's um, you can't use it commercially but who cares you're printing it printing it out and putting it on your keyboard so it's gonna work go there print them out cut them out glue them with rubber cement that's why you need the rubber cement that's why you need the scissors and the blade to cut them out of the paper take your time don't make it too sloppy if you make a mistake you can peel off the paper and rub the glue off the button with no worries it's not a permanent glue it's only temporary it holds the paper on beautifully a second keyboard for OBS is an absolute game changer getting a second keyboard that does this for only 10 bucks is absolutely incredible Thank God for HID Macros, fantastic software. Just in time prepping, I hope you get this tutorial. I hope it helps you out. Same goes for Freddy over at Medicated Fred. You guys, you gotta get these keyboards. It's gonna blow up your uh, live stream uh, capabilities. I really hope you get a, a lot out of it. If you're interested in seeing some more information on OBS, I have an awesome video in regards to scene switching. There are three methods. This video covers it all. I will see you guys over there. This is Scott from Blue Fox Creative. Stay strong and keep fighting.